Oh, look at you stopping in on the weekend. It is Sunday, December 18th. I'm John Zadar, and this is Subpenny Buzz. Now, here on Subpenny Buzz, we do the same thing we do on On Top and Hot. We talk about OTC and penny stocks, but we come at it from a different perspective on this show. In the other show, I talk to you about stocks that are catching my attention and I think people want to talk about. In this show, we are doing viewer requests. See, I'm out there on a lot of different social media sites, and I am getting a lot of requests to look at that stock or look at this stock or to recover a stock I've already covered in one of my other shows, and I am happy to do it. Now, I got a lot of stocks I got to cover, and I can't get to them all. Matter of fact, AJWR, I saw your list, pal. Saw it a little late. Sorry, we're not going to get to any of them this week. Now, this show isn't going to be like on top and hot. I mean, we're not going to be going to the OTC market, going from page to page. I want to cover a few more than three stocks here. So we're going to look at what is current and what I think is important and you should know. But I don't know what you want to know. Only you know that. So remember to do your own due diligence behind me. This is just a good place to start. Now, in saying all that, I've got all the information up here. I got the information here, the information up there. So I really don't get a chance to do smooth transitions. You know how I like that. I don't splice my videos. You've probably noticed that. There may be a splice in this because I don't want to start all over because I got tongue -tied, yeah, yeah, tongue tied, right? So there may be a splice here and there. I know you put it up put up, see, right there. That's a perfect place for a splice. I know you put up with it with everybody else's videos, so I hope you'll tolerate it from me every now and then. So the first ticker we're going to take a look at, how is that for a splice? I'm new at this. Not bad? <laughs> This is ticker DPLS Dark Pulse Inc. They had some big news come out. They are moving off of the OTC market up to the NASDAQ through a merger with a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. And the SPAC's current price on their stock, about $10, as most SPACs are until they close a deal. So DPLS with the news finished the day just a little over a penny and a half at 0 0.0165, almost seven and a half percent gains. Still on the OTC, but she's on the pink. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but we do not yet see a verified profile. However, with moving up to the NASDAQ, that point may be moot now. So let's take a look at some information I think is important about the company. Like, what does the company do? Well, Dark Pulse Inc. uses advanced laser-based monitoring systems that provide rapid and accurate monitoring of temperatures, strains, and stresses of infant structures. The company's technology is applied to dynamic critical infrastructure, including bridges, roadways, buildings, pipeline monitoring, perimeter and structural health monitoring, aircraft structural components and mining safety. Wow, that's a lot of areas that they're using their technology and they keep finding more ways to use it. Now here's a list of some of the things they are currently involved in right now. Remember, do your own due diligence. We're not diving into this deep. I'm just giving you a good heads up here. The company is focused on building smart cities. That is their primary thrust and everything that it entails. They created the first industrial metaverse. This was a repercussion. They had to create a program to work with the 3D virtual reality blueprints that they were making for these smart cities. So they created the first industrial metaverse. They have signed multiple contracts through Optilon, currently being used in the Huncup Bridge in California working with Florida Water Management with their water pipelines, portable water distribution, and sewer treatment plants. And they promise us more details about this deal coming in January of next year. And right now their global footprint is in about 11 countries. I don't know how it can be about. It's either 11 or 10. It's not about 11 countries, let's say. But the company isn't just working with their uh, laser technology. They are now broadening out to EV charging technology, which is all part of incorporation into these smart cities. They have already partnered with Aspire, which connects them to more than 50 other partners. They are developing a dynamic charging technology, planning EV charging lanes for the West Coast. Now that sounds darn interesting and that would be a good place to start them. I don't know, are they going to be lanes right on the expressway where you just pull off and charge up and pull right out? Wouldn't that be nice? 
and they are patenting a sensor for EV battery monitoring for fires and battery efficiency. And we can't overlook this, folks. Safety is very important with these electric cars right now with these sort of batteries we're using. There is a huge potential for an explosion or a huge fire. So we need all the safety uh, innovations that we can come up with. So whoever's doing that is going to be on the right side of the coin. Now let's take a look at some revenues here. Her game has changed, folks. You can see she had no money coming in 2018, 19, or 20. She did $7.7 .7 million at the end of 2021. Now we know it's millions, although I can't show you here. We have to add three zeros behind all these numbers. Now we can see here, September of 2021, she was already making money. And I didn't see anything before that. So it looks like in two quarters, they had done 7.7 .7 million, maybe a little more time than that. On the quarterly, they are making money regularly. Uh, the first quarter of this year, they did 2 million, second quarter, 4 million, and the third quarter, 1.4 million. But what stands out here to me is this gross profit. That is a huge drop, isn't it? That's a large loss. It really isn't a loss. This is an investment. The company's growing and they made an investment in themselves and the money had to come from somewhere. And that's what's being reflected right there. So what was that investment? Well, we got a piece of news that came out here, October 13th, Dark Pulse Inc closes acquisition of equity position in Gladstone Acquisition Corp. They tell us here that Gladstone Acquisition, ticker GLEE -E on the NASDAQ, has sold all of its sponsored economics to Dark Pulse Inc. They tell us all the different types of shares they got and the price of $1.5 million. Folks, that is an incredibly low price to buy an entire SPAC. They're not just investing in it, they have acquired it. Additionally, the SPAC has changed its name to Global Systems Dynamics while retaining the symbol GLEE. -E. Well, you can see here on Google, Global Systems Dynamics, the new name, and the old ticker, GLEE. -E. Look right underneath it. Global Systems Dynamics has changed their ticker now to GSD. Now, the reason I point this out is I can't find any filing or forms to tell me when this happened, but I guess it doesn't matter if I know when it happened. It has happened. And then we get this news that came out three days ago, December 15th. Emerging smart city technology company Dark Pulse Inc. to list on the NASDAQ exchange via a business combination merger with Global Systems Dynamics, their own SPAC. They tell us down here that Dark Pulse, an emerging company which utilizes advanced technologies including their patented Dark Pulse BOTDA laser-based critical infrastructure monitoring systems is pleased to announce the signing of a definitive business combination agreement with Global Systems Dynamics, ticker GSD. The combined company will be called Global Systems Dynamics. So they're changing their name and they're changing their ticker as well to a nice ticker, D-A-R-K. And they tell us here that they are going to be closing the deal in the first or second quarter of 2023, which means they're gonna be on the OTC market for at least another three, maybe six months. However, they are moving up to the NASDAQ. We don't have to worry about this deal being backed out of or canceled because they're making the deal with themselves. They own the SPAC. And if you think about that, that means they don't have to give away any money, any percentages, pay anything. They are making the deal with themselves so they get to keep everything. It really is very innovative. I like what they've done here. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. As you've probably expected, we're doing our charting on TOS. This is a free trading platform you get just for signing up for the free trading accounts with TD Ameritrade. Keep your account open, that's all you gotta do, and you can use Thinkorswim anytime you like, absolutely free. It's a bargain. So we are looking at DPLS here. She has been falling all of this time with a couple of bounces here and there. She had a high back here of about 5.9 cents and a low maybe a week ago of 008. Volume hasn't been bad through this period, but here since the 15th, the volume has gotten a lot stronger and the price took a serious jump. It was underneath all of our SMAs, went up to the 200, almost touched it at uh, just over 
two cents. Came down, but has continued on her uptrend. And that's what the technicals show. We have a strong uptrend since the 15th. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, which is just like the MACD, but the MACD uses the whole price. Percentage price oscillator uses, that's right, a percentage of the price. And our RSI is blazing, folks. Look at that. It's up there at 72, just laying on top of the overbought. Everything looks really nice on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour. Not a whole lot going on here until the 15th. We had that big surge and then she fell back and she is climbing a little bit. But what's most impressive here is she's staying on top of her nine day SMA. That is cracker thin, folks. The smaller the SMA, the less strength it has. It's very easy for the price to come under this. So if it doesn't, that means the price has strength of its own to keep itself up. So things look good on the one hour chart as well. However, our technicals do show a pullback. You see this curving down now, curving down. We have a crossover in our MACD coming to the underside and our RSI has fallen. It's not bad, but it is going sideways right now. Five day, five minute. Whoa, look at that jump. I knew it jumped early, but that's like everything. So she hit her high at what time? Let's see what we got there. 9.40. 9.40, folks, we're talking only 10 minutes after the bell rang. She jumped from that double zero nine up to two cents. You're talking over 200% gains in the first 10 minutes. She did pull back, bounce back, and went sideways, completely sideways, not only the rest of Thursday, but all of Friday as well. Now, what it looks like to me is there's two things that can happen. This price can either fall down to that 200 or it can buy time just sitting up here waiting for the 200 to come to it. That's what I'm thinking is going on right now. And once that 200 hits the price, the price could have a chance of scooping up like that and starting to continue to climb. So that's where the charts are sitting right now. You've got the news and we got three to six months before they're going to go. So I'm not expecting this to climb from now till then, but it's something to put on your charts to keep your eye on. All right. Now here's a company we haven't looked at in a long time. This is ticker AEPT, American Energy Partners. We looked at this back in February of this year. I think they had just acquired another subsidiary, Apex Energy Systems. And since we looked at it, they've acquired even more companies. But more to the point and more impressive are their revenues. They are growing at an incredible rate right now, folks. Their revenues have launched right out of the atmosphere. She finished today at eight and a half cents with, oh God, almost 23% loss today. She is on the pink tier in current and she has both those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. So she looks good in that regard. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us that American Energy Partners uh, is comprised of numerous subsidiaries that provide shareholder value through the acquisition and growth of energy assets, energy and infrastructure services, and the design, build, and operations of regional water treatment facilities. And what you've got here is a list of all their subsidiaries, 15 companies that they have bought. And each one of these subsidiaries is focused on a particular niche in the energy sector, whether it be water treatment or it be solar panels, EV charging, oil and natural gas, even radiation. I mean, they're touching everything and it's paying off for them in a big way. Now, what I really like about this company is they've got a low float, 12.9 million. It's great. I know you agree with me, but you're agreeing with me for the wrong reason. You're thinking, yeah, when the volume comes in, this thing is just going to run on the charts. Well, that's true. That is probably true. But what I'm thinking about is the risk factor. With a low float, the chances of them doing a reverse split are nil to none. They don't have enough shares to make a difference in the price. So we don't have to worry about them doing a secret reverse split, stealing all of our shares. So yeah, I like a low float for the fact it'll run, but I really like a low float because it protects me from a reverse split. Now take a look at these revenues, folks. At the end of September 2021, the company did $882,000 worth of business, under a million bucks, right? 
Look at the end of September 2022. $15.5 million. Whoa! What an increase. They're doing something right. And we can see that oil and natural resources brought in $1.8 million. And energy services, whatever that entails, is bringing in the lion's share of their revenues. $13.6 million. Now, like I said, they're still buying companies. I'm thinking this is when we looked at it, though we could have looked at it for another reason. Back in uh, January, they did acquire Apex Energy Service. In May of this year, they acquired Local Fabrication Company. And then in July, they got Austin Masters Services. So they are acquiring companies left and right, and the money is piling up. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's take a look at ticker AEPT, six month, four hour chart. We got a high back here six months ago of 16 and a half cents. Right now we're at eight and a half cents. So that means we've had a 50% drop over the last six months, which isn't too bad, but isn't real good either. And we had a low back here in September of six cents. She was on top of all her SMAs back here. She got underneath the 200, struggled with it for a while, but couldn't hold it, hit that low bubble, and she's fighting right now. She is fighting to get back up. She's struggling with her 50-day SMA, working real hard to get on top of it. But looking at her technicals, it doesn't look like she's winning the battle. All of the technicals are pushing down right now. Not very optimistic. 20-day, one-hour view. Little dribble. We're going from 11.5 cents to 8.5 cents. It's just falling ever so slowly. All of our technicals are still pushing down. And you can see there's no volume in today, right? Let's look at our five day, five minute. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is five minute bar, each one of these. This is on the 13th, the 15th, and the 16th. So you've got the maximum of five minutes trading on each day. That's it, five minutes at the most. And you see this little itty bitty blue bar on Friday? That was 140 shares. <laughs> That's all it sold. What it's been doing on an average is about 2,000 shares a day. So she is way under the radar. She's making money, she's adding on to her assets by getting more and more companies and nobody's paying attention to her. And she's got a low float to boot. So. When this gets some attention with the right kind of news, she could take off with this low float. She needs volume though. Here's another company we haven't looked at since February of this year, and they are going through some changes, and they're all good. They are doing some booming business, folks. Their revenues are kicking butt right now. Solar Integrated Roofing finished the day at about 10 and a half cents on Friday with under 1% loss. They're on the pink tier, they're current, they've got the verified profile and the transfer agent verified as well, so they look real good. They also have a stock promotion going on right now. Now what this means is that they have actually hired people, they're going to pay people to write about the company and put it online. No, it's not a bump and dump. They're not going to hype the company or lie about it. They're just articles. They're just letting people know who they are and what they do. They're trying to attract more investors. That's it. So what is this company all about? Well, you know, the company basically is a manufacturer, seller, and installer of solar panels for a lot of different reasons. Solar Integrated Roofing Corps is in the renewable energy equipment and service industry. They provide solar power as an integrated single source solution for roofing, EV charging systems, and power storage as well, specializing in commercial and residential properties throughout North America. Currently, their market cap is at $65.8 million, and these are some of the deals that are going on right now with the company. They are providing solar EV charging solutions to multiple hard rock hotels globally. They have been awarded a five-year EV charging contract with GSA, that's right, the Government Department, General Services Administration, 
And if you look in their news, they've had a lot of management changes here recently, a lot of them. And I can only anticipate that for good. When you change your management, it's out with the bad, in with the better. So we are hoping things are going to get even better than they are now. But right now, things are good. Do not get me wrong. Their revenues are growing at an incredible rate. I've got three pieces of news here that came out in April, May, and August. They were up 388% year over year. Then they were up 682%. And as of August, they were up 746% year over year. It just keeps growing month after month. And here are their revenues, folks. On the annual basis, they did 9 million back in 2020, 17 million, 16 million, 84 million. Whoa, what a jump. And looking at their quarterly, the first quarter of this year, they did $26 million. Second quarter, $66 million. And this third quarter, they did $57 million. What is that? 110, 120, 130, 140, 140 million dollars. So they've already surpassed their total revenues for last year. As I said, the company's growing at an incredible rate. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we are taking a look at CIRC, ticker S-I-R-C, six month, four hour chart there. And as you can see, the price has predominantly been underneath our 200 all this time, except for this big teepee in the middle of the prairie. This run that lasted many days started at the end of July at 18 cents and went all the way up to 61 cents here. You're looking at roughly 350% gains, roughly. And now all this volume that came in, this came in for a variety of reasons, lots of different news presses. In the beginning, they had canceled a whole bunch of shares. Then they had a new News press come out about the deal that they were making with Hard Rock Hotels. Things like that. Good stuff. Then people started taking their profits, obviously, and it fell fast. So fast it didn't even bounce or pay any homage to her 200-day SMA here. And she has been falling all that time since. It looks like she's going to continue to fall, honestly. And the technicals agree with me. Our PPO is pushing down underneath the pink. Our MACD has gone flat. And our RSI is in the basement down at 36. So everything looks really weak and really sad on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour. Well, that looks even sadder. That is a serious downtrend, folks, with no hope being shown anywhere. She's not only under her 200 day SMA, she is stuck under her 50 day SMA. Look, she is trying to get over it over and over again, hitting her head, but she cannot do it. Now, I get the feeling if she can succeed and get on top of that 50-day SMA, she may have a chance of changing her trend. But right now, as it looks, no chance at all. Our technicals, they don't show any change. As a matter of fact, everything is kind of planed out right now. No enthusiasm to move up, no enthusiasm to move down. The only thing that's weird is that our RSI is pushing up. And this only goes up when the price rises. So this must have pushed up just a little bit at the end of the day. Five day, five minute. What the heck? Look at all that volatility. What's been going on with this stock the last few days? We had a serious quick drop here from uh, 12 cents down to 10 cents, worked our way back over to the 200, jumped real quick to get on top, dropped real fast, and is struggling to hang on to this 200, and then lost her footing, her finger grip, whatever you want to call it, and she has slipped and fallen way down here. But right now, it looks like she's trying to recover. We see our technicals. We got a crossover on our MACD. Right there, we just had it, and it is pushing up. RSI is pushing up. It is at 50, and look at this. My favorite pattern. You see how this is curving up on the PPO? It's about ready to cross that pink line. That's a good thing. But what I'm noticing is the pattern between the ADX and the PPO. When you see the blue line going up and you see this pink line going down, guaranteed 100% the price is going up. And it works exactly the opposite. If you see this coming down and this one coming up, you're going to see the price falling, guaranteed, 100%. So right now, it looks like it wants to start growing again. But 
Who knows? And I got to tell you, I'm confused because this is a solid U.S. company working in the energy sector and it's making a ton of money. They're, they're about ready to double what they did last year and it seems nobody's paying attention to it. I would look at this stock, folks. I would do my due diligence. This one would make a good long hold in my opinion. Now here's a company we have talked about recently, just in August as a matter of fact. This is the sticker BYOC Beyond Commerce Inc. Now since we've looked at it, nothing has really happened. There's been no new filings, there's been no new news presses. However, I did jump into the financials and there have been some changes there for the good that I'll share with you. So BYOC, she finished the day at triple zero three. So she's not getting a lot of love, is she? Not a lot of attention. And I'm going to presume that the charts aren't going to impress us either. Now she did have a 20% gain today, but that's not very big. All that gain was was 0 0.00005. Not much to brag about. She is on the pink tier. She's current and she's got the verified profile and transfer agent verified as well. So things look good in that department. So what does BYOC do? Well, Beyond Commerce is a Nevada corporation that operates as a holding company focusing on the acquisition of big data companies in the business-to-business -business internet marketing technology and service space. And currently, they own two data companies, and they are actively seeking acquisition opportunities in high-growth sectors such as psychedelics, cryptocurrency, esports, logistics, amongst others. And one they didn't mention, electric vehicles because they just closed the deal. On April 8th, the company executed a binding letter of intent with Electric Built Incorporated, headquartered in Inglewood, California. The acquisition will provide the company exclusive access to Electric Built's commercial business know-how, intellectual property, business relationships and operations in electric vehicle fleet service. The shareholders have approved a name and ticker change as well. So BYOC Beyond Commerce is going to be something completely different and I don't know when that's going to happen. Now the one thing I did notice that's changing with this company, you found it in the financials behind the scenes, kind of tough to see, is they have been working very hard to shrink their expenses, shrink the money they're putting out. They were running at some huge net losses last year and they have cut it down by over 400%. So they are making a dent in the negative finances. The problem with the company though, they've got a huge float. 15.4 billion shares in the float. Folks, when you have a stock at 0003 with 15 billion shares, you can almost count on a reverse split. It just seems that way to me. I'm not saying they've said anything about it, but it just seems like common sense. Now looking at their financials, annual and quarterly, they've been doing about $4 million every single year, like clockwork. And looking at their quarterly, they're pretty much on the same schedule, 1 million, 1 million, just under 1 million. So it looks like they're not growing, but they're maintaining. And as long as they're chiseling down that negative finances, all that debt and liabilities and overspending, that's going to help them in the long run. So things are changing. We just don't see it on the surface. Let's go see if that chart looks like anything that has any hope whatsoever. Not a real impressive chart. I'll agree. This is ticker BYOC. She has got a bad case of the barcodes. This is a chronic case of picket fences if ever I saw one. What am I talking about? This. Doesn't that look like a barcode? picket fence. This is the problem with triple zero stocks. They don't move very far. This is bouncing from triple zero two to triple zero three over and over again for month after month after month after month after month. You see how long they can sit down there? This is why we normally don't talk about triple zero stocks because they don't move quick. Now, when they get big news, they'll bounce. This was the announcement of their deal with Electric Built. Boom, we went from triple zero three up to triple zero nine, 300% gains. But the sad part of the story is it came right back down to triple zero three. 
and she's sitting there right now however I can see our nine day SMA here the blue line is about ready to cross our 50 day yellow line that is a sign of hope we have a crossover on the MACD right now it's crossed over and crossing the signal line and we got some green bars on the board and our RSI is pushing up but nothing exciting there but there's that pattern we got our blue line pushing up and our red line pushing down. This is guaranteed growth. So we do see signs of hope in the four hour chart. Not much, but we do see an inkling. 20 day, one hour chart. We are not gonna get much information here. We've got our barcode working hard and furious here, but what you see is this 200 day SMA coming down and it has settled right into the price line. This will make it easier, tempting for the price to jump on top of that 200 day SMA and she's got some strength we're on top of the pink we crossed over the day before and we're now pushing away from it same thing with our MACD bounced and are pushing up RSI has been riding up from 44 to 58 so we do have hope in the charts five day five minute still working with the barcode we're stuck in here between triple zero two and triple zero three we just had a new SMA come on the board, our 200 day, and she's on top of it. Yes, she's on top of one of them. And our uh, technicals are showing signs of strength. Again, we got the blue going up, the red going down. That shows signs of growth, guaranteed to go up when that pattern is on the board, guaranteed. Our MACD is crossed over the signal line and pushing up and our RSI is rising. So we do see hope here. We don't see a lot of strength. We don't see a lot of volume. What we need is some new information. They need to tell us something we haven't seen before. The great thing is that they are nibbling down on that excessive spending and liabilities, but they're not making any more money yet, but they're gonna be bringing in a new company. So things are about ready to change. So this could be a good price, but that float, P-U, that float is ridiculous. And I personally, even though I like what I'm reading right now, personally, I'd be scared to buy a lot of these shares because I think I believe they're gonna do a reverse split. I don't know when, I don't know how, but that's just a feeling I have. Otherwise, I like the company. All right, folks, this is going to be the last stock we take a look at. I know exactly how you feel. I feel the same way. I'm kidding. Though I do love to talk about OTC and penny stocks. This is ticker ADHC. This is American Diversified Holdings Corp. Now, we did talk about this company back in May, a little bit. They had just cut a deal with another company. However, it's not until now, last week, that they just closed the deal. God, did that take a long time. So they finished on Friday at 0029 with almost, whoa, almost 35% loss on good news. I don't understand this. They are on the pink tier. They're current. Got those two ever precious green ticks I keep telling you about, but they're a shell risk. This means they're in business, but they're not making any money. And I can validate that. I haven't seen any money anywhere yet. But to be completely honest, the company did just come out with a financial on the 13th of this month, and I have not dived into that yet. And if you're gonna be doing any DD, that's where you should start it, right there in their most recent financial. It's gonna give you a lot more information than I'm gonna give you right now. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us here that they are a publicly traded holding company. What that means is that they buy other companies and make money off of what they're doing. They're subsidiaries, and that's how they make their money. ADHC is currently developing three web-based businesses listed right here. Universal Wellness, Cryptocurrency Business Now, and Cannabis Business Now. They go on to tell us that the company's goal is to become a $100 million revenue corporation during 2022 and 2023 by completing several high revenue acquisitions. Well, they better get this ball rolling because 2022 is all over. I guess that means 2023 is going to be a big year. Seriously. So these are the two acquisitions they have already made. They have acquired Rolls-Choice. This is a blunt and joint adhesive. I'll tell you more. <laughs> and they acquired Universal Wellness Holdings. And when they acquired Universal Wellness Holdings, they changed their name. I wasn't aware of that until I was reading the news. They tell us here that Universal Wellness Holdings Corps 
ticker ADHC, to acquire a $65 million in revenue healthcare company. Universal Wellness Holdings, formerly known as American Diversified Holdings, announced today that the company has executed a letter of intent to acquire a medical staffing company that has generated over $65 million in revenue over the last five years, and current revenues for 2022 are projected to exceed $20 million. Now, they did this back in July. I would have anticipated these revenues to show up on their financials. Now, maybe it's in that most recent one. Could be a surprise. I haven't looked at it yet. And it better be in the next one if it isn't in this one because that money is theirs now. Now, the other deal, they just closed. This came out on the 16th, American Diversified Holdings Corporation. Still using the old name, right? Reaches agreement to acquire Cannabis Innovator and Amazon Vendor Rolls choice. They tell us here that American Diversified Holdings announced today it has reached an agreement to acquire Rose Choice, a Southern California-based cannabis firm. The agreement provides for ADHC to acquire Rose Choice, a wholly owned subsidiary, and provide additional funding to Rose Choice for inventory marketing. And this is one of the products on Amazon. What this is is a glue stick for your joints, for your blunts, so we don't have to lick them with our diseased saliva. We don't know who's healthy and who's not. And to be honest, even when we were all healthy, I don't like smoking other people's saliva. You ever seen anyone take a joint and put the whole thing in their mouth? Cut that out. So now they got a glue stick. It's not even made out of any cannabis products. I'm not quite sure what it's made of, but it's all natural stuff. And you just roll it on your paper or your blunt, and seal it just like that, easy peasy. And this could be a very popular product now with the COVID and the monkey pox and whatever else is gonna be coming around the corner. Now, if we take a look at their revenues, there's nothing there, folks. Just wanted to make that clear that I had looked at it. Nada. But that revenue coming in from the other company should be theirs already. And Rolls-Choice is already a company making money. And that's going to be added on there too. So soon, very soon, this shell risk is going to disappear. And we're going to see numbers popping up there. And it's going to be nice to see that. Let's go take a look at the charts for ADHC. <laughs> There you go, folks, ADHC, six month, four hour chart. She has got a lot of activity, big bounces on news. You go back and read the news about these two deals we just looked at, this is what was happening. And then you've got more jumping today. She was over the 200 the first half of these six months and then under the 200 until here recently, the volume has gotten very strong. It was on the 9th, she started to grow. She started at about 002 and went up to 0069. You're looking at 350% gains there in four days. And for the last two days, she has been falling. And it doesn't make sense because the deal closing came out on Friday right here. And she fell on that news. And all the technical shows she is not done falling. Everything is still pushing down. 20-day, one-hour view. Well, as you can see, nothing was going on until the 9th. She started to rise, sitting on that nine-day SMA. Easy peasy. Hit her high. Went sideways the rest of the day, and then on Thursday and Friday, fell, fell, fell to heck with the good news. Technicals are still driving down right now. Five day, five minute view. All right, she didn't just drop on Friday, she dropped right at the news. Look at this, it came out, we, we had a bounce right there. People got excited, ooh, this sounds good. I guess people took their gains way up here because she fell fast all the way down here to that low bubble of 0029 and basically has been going sideways with just a little bit of droop. 50-day SMA has caught up to her. That is sitting right on top of her. Hopefully, she'll try to get on top of that. But the technicals don't show any strength whatsoever. I don't understand why this has happened, but I think the change will occur when we see the money show up on the pages, when we see financials. And maybe there's money in the financials that came out on the 13th. I didn't look at it. So once they start showing revenues and they've got what, 20 million coming from the one company, the wellness company, and I don't know how much is coming from Rolls Choice, but they're going to have millions on the books from Zilch right now. That's going to impress the investors. So hopefully the stock moves then. 
Watch that news. Check out those financials. ADHC. She's got something going. It just hasn't started yet. Hey, thanks for dropping in, folks. I appreciate your time. It's fun to share with you. Do me a favor. Let me know down below. What do you think of some penny buzz and viewer requests? Is it something I should continue doing? I look forward to talking with you tomorrow, Monday. We'll be doing on top and hot as we usually do. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.